Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you that haven't seen me speak before, this is basically a quick pricey into my career. Yes, I really did used to have hair that bad, and yes, I am that much of a geek. I've spent the last 12 years reverse engineering malicious code, looking at what cyber criminals are up to, and trying to uncover the latest tactics that they'll use to target you. Today, I want to give you a snapshot of that interesting new world of cybercrime. And I want to talk a little bit about the expectations of what most people think a scam looks like versus the reality of what cybercriminals are doing today. Before I do that, I have to point out I've been using this introduction for a while now. And just recently on Twitter, there's been a bit of a competition to see who could make the most offensive version of it. Uh, and I'm a big fan of this one. For any Lord of the Rings people out there, so you know, use the hashtag, see if you can one up that. Regardless, when I talk about cybercrime, one of the first things I hear from people is this Why me? I'm not that interesting. I don't have millions of pounds or dollars or euros. I'm not a high net worth. If you are, you probably should be more concerned about it. Why me? What's fascinating to me is how cyber criminals have become experts in making money from all of us. To explain that to you, let me tell you a little story about a recent experience with a journalist. And I saw through this journalist's eyes, for the first time in 12 years of my career, the shock and awe of what a modern cyber criminal looks like and how organized they are. They said to me, how do cyber criminals make money from you? So I started talking about credit card fraud. It's the obvious thing. We can all imagine how stealing credit cards makes money. And they said, no, 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 no. I want to see the good stuff. Take me to the dark web. And you have to say it in that voice, otherwise it's just less awesome sounding. For those of us in the industry, we refer to the dark web as the internet. And there's a small <laughs> corner of it, accessed with a little bit of software, where you can find these interesting sites and services. Now, there are these sites that are selling your information on scale that have become so numerous and so professional, there are even sites dedicated to rating the features of cybercrime sites. <laughs> so you can go on here and you can see the interest level, the commission that cybercriminals will take as part of a transaction. You can see you know, whether or not they force nice features like encryption. The cybercriminals do take security very seriously after all. <laughs> so we started you know, browsing through some of these sites. He said, well, show me how easy it would be to buy some credit cards. So we went to one of the market leaders in this industry of selling your data. And here you can see a run of credit cards for sale. Now, each of these is an individual that's had their information stolen through malicious code, through, through phishing, any number of different techniques. And there are thousands and thousands and thousands available in the UK alone. And you can filter by other countries around the world. You click on one of these checkboxes, and using bitcoins, nice digital currency, you can buy credit cards, and seconds later, those credit cards arrive. But here's the best bit, slash worst bit. That credit card record has your credit card number, your name, your address, your date of birth, potentially even a passport number, which increases the pricing. And it's delivered in an encrypted file with a higher level of security than most actual retail organizations use. So I walked away from it going, man, I really wish that retailers would behave like cyber criminals. <laughs> now, it's not just the credit cards. If you click to this other section, there's an accounts section. And this is where it gets interesting. Just your email address and password is worth between 25 cents US dollar Bitcoin equivalent and $3. Just that alone can be used to scam your friends, your family, and others, and therefore is valuable to cyber criminals. They're selling off Apple iCloud accounts here for about $1.75. We have a mass market with incredible usability, with automation, with excellence in security, dedicated to profiting from far more diverse types of information 
than just the credit card. Now, how does this information end up on such a vast market? Well, there are lots of different ways. The driving force of malicious code and cybercrime over the last five years has been exploiting people who failed to update their computers, enabling the bad guys to run code in the background using something called an exploit. But in the last little while, there's been a huge increase in high quality social engineering, asking people nicely to deploy malicious code and give their data away. If you go and walk to a random person in the street and ask them what a modern cyber criminal is like, they'll tell you about the Nigerian banker that wants to give you $42 million, right? Or my favorite one at the moment, I love this one. This is incredible. Uh, have you seen the Nigerian print scam? A few of you, yes? At the moment, there's a Nigerian print scam. It starts as a Nigerian prince, and he's stuck in space. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, that is serious. We need to get him back from space. I should send this person some money. <laughs> the notion of professional cyber criminals isn't something that registers on, on the everyday person's mind. The notion that you can go to a support forum and get technical support on buying credit cards isn't something that registers in our minds. This is what we expect a scam to look like. I remember when scams were you know, for millions of dollars. Now, billions of dollars to get a click. Or this one, which is a personal favorite. This is a scam. It opens with, if you are a time traveler or alien disguised as human and or have the technology to travel physically through time, I need your help. <laughs> so obviously you're thinking, seems legit. <laughs> These are the laughable stereotypes, but there are an astonishing number of scams out there that are much higher quality. Bad grammar, bad spelling, bad links, dodgy images. These things aren't necessarily the good identifiers of a scam that they used to be. So we thought we'd run a test. We wrote this tool, we wrote it in PHP because we like pain, and we distributed it to a large number of users where we sent them scams, both of the stereotypical kind and the modern high quality convincing kind. Let me walk you through a few stats. For just over a couple of thousand people, for a tax refund, eight people clicked the perfect looking one, none on the dodgy one, which basically tells us that no one believes they're ever getting a tax refund. <laughs> Next, here is my resume relatively even conversion rate. Apparently, people expect bad grammar. Amazon package. I love this one. Do you ever do that thing where you order something from Amazon, you forget about it, and it turns up a couple of weeks later, or days, I have a short memory, and it's like, you know, you're a time traveler and it's Christmas and you bought yourself a present, <laughs> right? This is perfect. You, you know, it says, oh, you have to enter your information or your package will go back. Great scam. Payment advice. This teaches us people like money. But of course, there is a category of people in here that literally can't be helped. And for those, we have free money, <laughs> of which 17 people clicked. Good job. Now, let me dive into this last example here to open your eyes. I have a friend who runs a small marketing company. He's the CEO, his wife's the CFO. He received a scam with a document attached saying, please transfer money from here to here. He looked me straight in the eyes and he said, the only reason I knew it was a scam is because my wife is not that nice to me. <laughs> That's the level of security detection that we're dealing with here. Let me show you some of these document scams. Here's my first example. I just recorded this from a, from a, a recent campaign. I'm going to open it up and you can see here a, a nice localized document. People think scams are all in English, not necessarily. This enable content button at the top there for the keen eyed amongst you, if you click it, deploys malicious code. Here's another nice example. I love this one, super convincing. It's a supplier's form and it's all blurred out because of course, when you encrypt things, they become blurry. <laughs> but in an off moment, we could fall for that. Let's have a look at another example here. This is brilliant. Here, we have a document posing to be from a political organization, and they've realized that people may have enabled security controls to prevent people clicking enable content. So they've made a read me 
that tells the user how to disable the security so that you can run the malware. And it looks like an Office document. I mean, that's ingenious. Here's a really good one. For those of you in the audience that might be thinking, you know, you're, you're kind of technical, this is beautiful. Here we go. This one professes to be an encrypted document. And what do we know about encryption? You encrypt things when they're important. So if you get an encrypted document, you've got to open it and see what it is. And there's a UPS logo because, I don't know, that makes it better somehow. <laughs> But the point is, these are far from the stereotype scams that we expect. Let me show you what an attacker can do when you open these documents and click Enable Content. Here's one I made earlier in a Blue Peter moment. Generated a nice little MS Office macro. That's the thing we're using to deploy this evil malicious code. And over on the other side here, I've got my victim, uh, which has got a pirate ship, because pirates are cool. And I've got a document, company salaries, which I'm going to open up and click Enable Content. In no time at all, from the other side of the internet, the attacker now has complete control over this person's computer. So from here, we can now, for example, log the keyboard. We can take screenshots to see what this person is up to. I've put them side by side, but this could be someone the other side of the world monitoring you. A lot of people have no idea that a document, an email with an invoice, could be so damaging to your computer. There's the desktop. You can turn on the webcam. You can log every keystroke. You can automatically collect credit cards, passwords, you name it. This is my favorite bit. Uh, you've got this nice little notepad window here. So I type some text up. And in near real time, the attacker the other side of the world gets to see all of the text that you type. Oh. That's where it's supposed to go. Ooh, that's scary, right? This is a, a tool by Raphael Modge called uh, Cobalt Strike. It's exactly the same technique that the cyber criminals are using. So the all-important question that you are probably asking is what should we do? Well, I'd probably need about 30 minutes to go through all the best practices, but let me tell you this. First off, following the 10 simple best practices you can find littered all over the internet by providers, will do a, a, a massive amount of good in thwarting these attacks. Second, apply what you know about the real world to the digital. In real life, if someone comes up to you and says, there's someone in space, and they need money to get back, <laughs> you might be dubious. If someone presents an invoice on your desk and says, pay this, you might go, who is it? Ask those questions. Open your eyes to the fact that cyber criminals are a little more convincing than ever before. And at a national level, we must accept that society going forwards will be more and more digital, and we must ensure that kids are educated as to these kinds of attacks from an early age so that we don't end up with this horrible gap where people think the Nigerian banker is a modern scam when in reality, they look more like this. I hope that's been slightly terrifying. I hope you'll leave, change your passwords, update your computers, and of course, immediately go and close your bank accounts after you clicked on that email earlier. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening to me, and do enjoy the rest of the day.